Hi guys, today I'm making Victoria's sponge cake, which is also called a sandwich cake. The recipe is pretty simple. You sandwich two cakes together with jam and um, cream and um, decorate it with fresh berries and a dusting of ice and sugar. This recipe was created in England during the time of Queen Victoria and this cake was actually cut into small bite-sized pieces and served at the tea time. There is a little trick to make a good sponge cake, which I'm going to share with you right now. Here it is guys, you need 4 eggs for this recipe and I'm going to weight the eggs. And it's very important that you know how much your eggs weigh before you start adding other ingredients. So for example, the weight of 4 eggs is 175. And I'm going to use the same amount of butter. And as you can see, I'm using this beautiful Irish butter, which is uh, yellow in color. Um, I like using it in most of the recipes because it lets me know um, when the um, butter is beaten enough because it turns pale yellow. So our butter has to weigh exactly 175. And then we continue on with our sugar and we have to get exactly 175 grams of sugar. I'm gonna break this recipe down in cups for you. If you don't own um, a kitchen scales, but I would recommend you getting one because it is very, very important to get your recipe right. So, and then we're gonna use 175 grams of self-rising flour. Self rising flour already has a baking powder in it. We also going to need one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. In a stand-up mixer or hand mixer you're gonna put your butter in and also your sugar and we're gonna start beating the butter on the medium to high speed until it turns pale yellow and that process usually takes about three to four minutes. This first step in making a good sponge cake is very important. You need to get your butter very creamy. As soon as you creamed your butter enough, we're going to start adding the eggs. And add your eggs one by one. And at this point, you don't need to cream anything. You just have to make sure that your eggs are all incorporated in the butter and sugar mixture. And it's going to look kind of funky because it's going to look like it's uh, separating. But don't worry, as soon as we put the flour in, um, the mixture is going to become creamy again. After we've added all four eggs and our batter is looking nice and creamy, it's time for vanilla extract. We're going to add one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And um, it's time for our flour. We need to pre-sift our self-rising flour and we're going to start adding it to our batter spoon by spoon. And if your stand-up mixer has um, a fold-in function, that's a good time to use it now. But if you're using a hand mixer, you have to fold your flour by hand by lifting um, your spatula. So at this point we can lift up uh, the mixer, scrape down the bowl, make sure we get all these little flower bits off the sides of the bowl and then just give it one quick mix and our batter is ready. Now we need to transfer our batter into two identical baking tins. And as you can see I didn't spray in mine um, with anything because they're non-stick and the batter has enough um, butter in it so I was just hoping that uh, the cakes are not gonna stick but if you worry for your cake uh, to stick to the bottom of the pan you can spray it with a non-stick cooking spray and lay the bottom of the cake form with a parchment paper so just spread your dough evenly and put your tins on the same baking rack in a preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit oven and we're gonna set the uh, baking time for 20 minutes but I usually go a couple minutes more just to make sure that I have plenty of time for this cake to bake. At exactly 20 minutes of baking time I'm gonna check on my cakes and here's a little trick. If the sides of the cake have separated from the tin the cake is ready as simple as that. 
We need to let the cakes cool down a little bit and after that we can transfer them onto the cooling rack and as you can see they're looking perfect. So we need to cool them completely. In the meantime we're going to prepare our whipped cream and we need 250 milliliters of heavy cream and we're going to add 1 tablespoon of custard sugar and 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract and we're going to start whipping the cream on high speed until the stiff picks. When our whipped cream is ready, it's time for us to assemble the cake. So we're going to put one cake on a platter or a cake stand and we're going to generously smear some strawberry jam on it. In the original recipe, the raspberry jam is used, but um, I just had a strawberry jam in my um, pantry, so I'm going to use a strawberry jam today. And I'm actually using the seedless one, so as you can see, it's nice and bright in um, color. And then we're going to put um, a big tablespoon of that whipping cream on top, and then also just um, spread it around, uh, leaving maybe half an, of an inch um, of the sides and um, we are gonna put some fresh strawberries on top of that whipped cream hey guys do you like my tool it looks like little strawberry and it actually cuts the strawberries really well and then we're gonna put another tablespoon or two tablespoons of whipping cream so what we practically making is a sandwich and on the second cake we also gonna um, spread some strawberry jam and we're gonna top it up and our sandwich cake is ready or I should say Victoria sponge cake is ready simplicity is the key in decorating Victoria sponge cake so just couple fresh strawberries on top and a dusting of icing sugar and this cake is good enough for a queen so you guys can enjoy it as much as Victoria enjoyed it in her time. So just cut a little piece of Victoria's sponge cake and enjoy it with your tea or coffee. Invite some friends over. Have them try this cake. It is absolutely delicious. So I hope you like this video. I hope you will make this cake for your loved ones. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye.